screencasting. Um, so for the prac, there's three parts, 4.1, 2, and 3. And do we need to do all of this? And yes, so in the so that booklet that you have is basically your raw is basically your raw information um, about what you'll need to bring in to the SAC. And the SAC is a different like a test that it draws on that information. Okay, so if you have all your so it's not like the right on the practice. Well, in some ways it is, but they're questions based on those practice questions. Okay, um, and and some of it is just transferring what you've got in the boxes on your on your um, sheet onto the prac. Uh, okay, so the first part is really just um, data that's been given to you, um, and this is some mass spec data and. There's some questions. So if you can answer these questions, then that will be pretty much what the questions on the SAT are based on. Okay? So it'll say, label each of the peaks visible in the low sensitivity spectrum of air. Okay, so well, there's two spectrum. This, this is the low sensitivity one. And you need to think about... Uh, you need to think... Okay. You need to think about what uh, might add up to 14. What might add up to 14? Um, 7 and 7 could add up to 14. 10 and 4. Okay, this is great. Uh, what you might find in the air. And uh, do you remember back to what the most, the most abundant gas in the air is? Nitrogen. Takes up 80% of the air. The other 20% is oxygen. So nitrogen, if you look at the periodic table, um, wow, has a mass of 14. <coughs> um, but, uh, but nitrogen occurs as, as two nitrogen molecules. Okay, so <coughs> two 14s. Wow, there's a lot of it. Hey, that's amazing. So that could be, you might label that as nitrogen. Okay. Um, and so on. So you need to think about what can add. Now, let's just talk about these two. When you when your mass spec, remember when mass spec it, um, gets bombarded with electrons to, to ionize it, otherwise it doesn't move, it needs to be charged, it needs to be ionized. And when you hit uh, nitrogen gas, um, you can you can um, form an ion of N2, um, which is probably which is what this is, that's why you can detect it, what this one is. Um, but sometimes you actually fragment, you break apart that nitrogen, and so you might have a single nitrogen atom, which might be this one. Okay? Um, and so on, you need to think about them, what can add up, and you've been given, I think, a list of possible components. Oops, ah, no, not that one. Where do I want to be? I want to be there. Um, possible components. Uh, here we are. So here we are. It tells you about um, nitrogen, key gases, and but there's also some um, 15. Okay, so there's a there's a fair bit as two lots of N2, but there's also some that's N14. Sorry, two lots of N14. There's also some that's N14 and N15. And, and, would that, be the number 29? and that would be the number 29. Much less. Most of it is two lots of N14. Adds up to 28. Some of it is 29. Okay. Um, hang on, look, there's lots of clues in here. 16, oxygen exists entirely of O16, a small amount of O18, some of O17, and oxygen always occurs as two atoms, O2, and two lots of 16. Oh, look at that. Big peak. Two lots of O2. So you could think that that one there uh, oops, might be uh, O16. Two, O2, 16 isotopes, okay? Um, uh, okay, so the think, you just need to think about how, where the different peaks might be, what they, how you might get them adding up to these amounts. Uh, 40, uh, what have we got here? So 40. Um, Well, what's another gas that uh, maybe we breathe out? Carbon dioxide. Now, what would that add up to? CO2. CO2. 
Carbon 12 and oxygen is 16. Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Is there any forty-eight? No, we don't see that. An argon. Actually, that was the other thing. So, what's argon? Argon is sitting here on forty. So, you need to go through that process of thinking what's there, and actually, oh, so we've been given it. I didn't even see it. So, there it is. We've been told there's forty. So that's probably that peak. So, um, uh, what's eighteen? Water. What's what's the if you have water H two O, vapor, two hydrogens, they're one each, and an O is sixteen. Sixteen plus two, eighteen. So I think we can label pretty much all those peaks. In the low sensitivity. Then we can talk about that. So you might talk about here the labeling. Okay, that's 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 you've done that, and then you talk about the proportions, which we just we mentioned. Okay, that nitrogen is eighty percent of the atmosphere, and oxygen is twenty percent. Okay, then you might relate it to those peaks, and um, then you've got to do the same process with the high sensitivity. So high sensitivity means you picked up more. Um, oops, where are we? No, no. What does it mean by high sensitivity? So basically, they've turned up the. Oh, there it is. Sorry, they've turned up the. Um, the sensitivity, and you're seeing the same peaks again, but now other little peaks are popping up. Okay, so these 44, 44 we didn't see before, like 34. Um, the other peaks look bigger, they just got bigger, but you're starting to see some of the ones that maybe you didn't see. Okay, so try to think about how to label those. So if you've got the, the low sensitivity ones labeled, then the, the, bit, the smaller ones should just be sort of you know, related, but maybe different isotopes, different versions of, of the small ones. Um, all right. And if we've got time, we can come back to that. But um, why are they off scale? You think about just why might they be off scale on the um, on the high sensitivity one? So yeah, it's just you've amplified it. You turn the gain up basically on the thing, and it's, it used to be just on scale. And now you you've blown it out so you can see the smaller ones. Um, and then the last question is, uh, which peak would not have been present had the air sample been fully dry? What is dry? Well, if something's not dry, what does it mean? Wet? Water. Okay, so good good answer. Water. All right, so moving on. Oh, here we go. So, so now you just need to think about how big the peaks would be with these particular um, things. So if you had methane or nitrogen dioxide or sulfur dioxide, how big would those peaks be? Um, and so just basically adding up the molar masses and working that out. And a comment about how how an organisation such as the Environmental Protection might use it. Okay, so you can just think about well, what would they do? How would they use the spectrum to detect pollution? Any ideas? Exactly. So you could actually look, they'd be after looking for a particular pollutant, they'd know what the peak should look like and then see is it there, and if so, is it, is it there a lot, is it there more than it should be. Okay. So um, that would be that would be an example for that. Alright, let's keep going. Oh, by the way, those who just arrived, I am, we are trying to screencast this, so hopefully, um, I think it's still going. Can we bring whatever we like? Uh, you can bring this booklet, absolutely, and any loose notes that go with that. You can't bring your textbook, but... Can we bring this folder? Uh, a whole folder? I think the idea is it's just a prac note, what you normally have for a prac. Okay, so if you want to bring extra stuff, uh, so no no books as such. But if you want to bring extra notes... If I take out all of the stuff that I've taken notes on, would that be okay? Well, I guess that would be okay. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Uh, all right, so we're going to you're going to work through the. Um, this is now when you weighed and worked out the volume of the metal cube to work out Avogadro's number. And where are we? Question. Yes. 
Um, well, for my class, we've only recorded one one metal. Okay, so my class has just got one metal for our ones. So um, I guess it depends on your teacher what they what they've asked. For. Uh, anyway, here's uh, there's a whole lot of information here, which hopefully you can work through. And there's a sample calculation which you should sort of try to understand. Um, so for it, let's just go through it quickly. Um, actually, I'll just flip to the flip chart. Because I've got that there. Yeah. If we've only done it for one minute, is that okay? That's okay. For my class, that's fine. But that's all I expected. Um, here's the calculation. Uh, and the example is if you've got aluminium, you're working with this one. You weight it. You may have got a similar weight. Your cube's probably going to be different, so it's not going to be exactly this. So a lot of background now is going to ruin our recording, so we can just keep it right down, unless you've got a question, of course. Um, uh, so you work out the volume of water displaced, okay, there, and then that equals the volume of the metal, so whatever came out of you can is the volume. Um, you take the atomic radius, so that's here in picometers, by 10 to the minus 10, so you've just got to keep those units there, 10 to the minus 10 there and there. Um, so that's your radius, 1.43 by 10 to the minus 8 because you've multiplied them together so hopefully your calculator's done the right thing. And then it says work out the volume. So that's just radius and volume just gives, it gives you the formula. Uh, 4 times pi times your radius cubed divided by 3 gives you the volume of one, one atom. And then it says, well, you've got, the, you've got the volume of this little sphere, and you've worked out the volume of your block, and it's really just saying how many of those little spheres, or that volume, how many times does that volume go into the block? How many atoms can fit into your block of metal? And that's what, that's what this equation does for you here. Uh, so that's what that is. It's saying, take the volume you started with, divide it by the volume of one atom, and that gives you the number number of atoms in the block. In the block. And at the same time, you'll work, you work out the how many moles you had in your block. So that's where you use, this is all using volume. volume, is it? And then the, the flip side is you're working out the moles, n equals m on m, here, and that's where you have the mass, okay, divided by, and it's aluminium 27, which is from the periodic table, gives you the number of mole in that block, okay? So that's based on masses. On mass. Um, and the question is, the, what we're trying to work out is Avogadro's number, which is how many um, particles are in a mole. Okay. And if you've worked out you've got 0.81 mole, okay, that's not quite. It's less than a mole. You're going to have to. You just want to work out how much is in one. Okay? So you're going to divide by that number to get one, and you're going to divide the total number of particles by that number. That's what this that's what this formula is doing for you to work out particles. Uh, particles or atoms in one mole. Which is equal to Avogadro's number. Avogadro's Okay, that's the idea of the crack. Yeah, sure. It's not, no. But it's an experimental result. Okay? There are a few assumptions that, are, that maybe explain perhaps why it's not so close, but it's not bad. Like, I wouldn't say it's the wrong answer, because it's pretty good. You know, it's six, what's the, we, we know it is 6.02 by 10 to the 23. It, you know, 6 trillion trillion, and this is 8 trillion trillion, and it's like a factor of, you know, it's in the ballpark, it's in the trillion trillion. Okay. Yeah. 
For my class, just one. Um, so yes, so when we took different measurements of the same metal, you just take the average. So that's the, trying to get it more precise. Okay. Um, all right, so that's that one. Uh, let's look back here. Questions? Okay. Uh, now, so these are just the sort of things that you'll fill in. That's your answer there. So you've worked out the, that was whatever that one was, like in the example. And there were assumptions made. Yeah. Yes. yes. So the theoretical is 6.02 by 10 to the 23. And our experimental value was whatever you got. You got you know, 8.1 by 10 to the 23, and the theoretical was 6.02. Yeah. Shh, can you just keep it down? Yep. Yeah, if you did three different metals. No, I don't think you should average different metals. But if you weighed the one metal three times, you should average that to get as precise a weight for one metal and get three different numbers. And okay, maybe then you could talk about okay, the average of the three Avogadros, if, that, if that's what you did. Yeah, so for you, that would be the average, I guess, yeah, that's right, the three different metals averaged. Yeah, sorry, I said we came around to that final point. Um, okay, good. Any assumptions that we made? There's a big one. Yeah. Yes. 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 True. So we assume that the um, the atoms are tightly packed and there's no wasted space. Okay. Now a couple of things that could stop that happening. But you know, well, yes, and they're spherical. Okay. Now you can imagine a sphere. You got like oranges. Okay, they're all stacked. You can get them close, but there's a bit of wasted space in there. Okay, so, um, so there's, there's, there's potentially we've assumed we've assumed there's no wasted space. We basically assume that atoms can pack like this, like they're cubes. Okay, that volume packs, but in fact we believe they're kind of they're spherical, which means that they won't pack as tightly as we would like them to pack. Okay. Um, so. Uh, there are less less atoms can fit in the space than we than we would think. So that might be why our number is higher. Okay. Um, accuracy. So that's accuracy. Just talks about you need to talk about your um. Oh, that that relates to that assumptions. Any other source of error? So this is like experimental error here. So would that be like if we dropped it in hard to Lost some volume, so water splash, water didn't transfer, you can measure. That's volume. Did the measurements wrong? What else? How else? What other measurements have you taken? Weight. Weight? Exactly. How good were your scales? Do you trust them? Sig figs, absolutely. How many how many places do your set of scales go to? How clear how many places can you read the um, volume to? And so just think about um, how you're going to modify that. What have we got here? Oh, okay. I'm just going to keep soldiering on, just so we get to the end. If we get to, I'll go and get to the next section because we've got sort of ten minutes, but then we'll come back if there are. If that's okay, this is a burning question. Oh, wait. What's the thing on the displacement? The displacement volume? The, um, what the Measuring cylinder? Yeah. Okay, that's that. Okay. So that's that one. Now, uh, oh, well now we burnt some magnesium. Remember that? And let me just flip back here. All right, so we did that one. 
This is just going through the theory of uh, number two, how you calculate the, what you subtract. You can have a look at that. This will be on the screencast, hopefully, uh, if it all comes through. Um, just how you work out the volumes to end up with the number of atoms. Uh, just a reminder of how to use your scientific calculator. Using the X button. You know, that means by 10 to the 10. Uh, oops, what's that one? Yep, so that just tells you how to get that for, um, for part two. And then part three, um, you just work through these magnetic. And few a few people have asked, how do you get this? How do you get this bit? How do you get the mass of the oxygen? You need to understand that this equals magnesium. That first one you've calculated here, whatever that is, is the mass of magnesium ribbon by itself. This one equals magnesium oxide, which is basically magnesium plus oxygen. And so to get the mass of oxygen reacted, you need to um, subtract this one from oh, this one, sorry, yeah, that one from this one, okay? So Mg plus O minus Mg equals just O. So there, is, there are experimental problems here, and what I've said to some people is you may have got like a negative result here or something, you know, some weird thing. For the sake, there's an error, and for the sake of calculation, I'm, oops, I'm saying, just say that's happened, got an error, doesn't make sense, whatever. Makes sense. Um, so there's error, whatever. You can explain that. Um, use 0.1 grams. Okay, just use that. So you can just do some calculations. So you can actually have some sensible calculations. As long as you say that, then that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So zero, zero. You'd expect it to be above zero. If you're getting zero, just use use that. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's keep going. Questions. So, so you're going to you're going to basically work through this um, this thing and need to fill in for each of these um, for tomorrow, right? Um, the percentages. So you work you put in the mass that you've calculated over the total mass that gives you the percentage based on your own results straight out of that table. How does it compare with others? Well, um, if you get other results. You can, yeah, you can. Um, but if you don't have other people, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll just compare it to the theoretical from for my class. And the percentage, um, the theoretical is. Uh, oh, I don't have this, but <clears throat> the theoretical percentage is we're we doing percentage composition, okay? <laughs> so for percentage, for theoretical percentage composition, I'll just have to flip back. Uh, two. Where are we? Um. Well, let's see. Let's just see what I've got. Um. You use the um, the molar masses from the period on um, the periodic table. Okay, so you've been given this formula. That's the theoretical. Uh, formula. You work out the total uh, molar mass, okay, so the molar mass of this thing. From the, you go to the periodic table, you've got Mg at 24, you've got oxygen at 16, and that adds up to 40, right? That's the, that's the molar mass. The compound um, relative uh, compound mass um, or molecular mass of magnesium oxide, and then to work out the percentages, you just put the magnesium one, the magnesium component over the total, and times by 100, 60 percent. And you, this is the theoretical, and then you take the oxygen component over the total, 
multiplied by 100, and that's the percentage of oxygen. Now, uh, here we go. All right, so that's that. Um, oh, that's just for my class here. Yeah, if, you, if you've got comparing the class results, just um, you can just talk about, as I said, comparing to the, the to the theoretical. Okay, so compare to the theoretical, and um, improvement. So you can. This is ideas you can think about for improving. You can use a more accurate scale. Think about the scales um, when you actually were burning it. Some of us had real issues getting it to burn. Okay, if you think about what well, has it completely burnt, is it complete combustion, or did you actually lose anything? You might want to think about that. Um, this would be experimental error. So this is just a way to improve it, improve things. Um, okay, and I'm just going to go. I'm going to rush on to the last one. Um, so in the sack. I'm oh, sorry, Cheryl. Yeah. Um, no, you'll be, uh, you'll be guided through, okay, the, the questions will guide you through what does this mean, and it'll be basically drawing what you've written on those, in those boxes and putting it together, okay? So Whatever's in the boxes will be asked for in the set. So we just well, we just do this tonight, well, okay, that's 60, 70% of the story. The other 30, 40, 30, oh, sorry, Nishadi, yeah. You'll be given, basically it's kind of filling the boxes, it's like, like a test format. Tell me about your errors, tell me about the data that that. It'll lead you through, okay? However, there'll be a couple of other questions. The two other, the other kind of questions you'll get are just working out, be given some information to work out something like a relative atomic mass. Okay? So you need to work out a relative atomic mass, given some um, results, and think about how you draw that as a mass speed. Okay, so, you, so the sort of stuff you learn for the test is very relevant. Okay. Draw a mass spec. And, um, uh, no, a sketch is fine. Question, yep. You can bring loose notes, yes, but no textbooks, no bound books. The sort of notes that you, you only have for a track. Well, whatever. We're not going to rigorously police. Anyway, let's move on. Last thing. You'll also have to do a concept map. What's a concept map? What's a concept map? And this is really just linking together. This is the sort of thing you could do beforehand and bring in. There's nothing to stop you doing this now. So an example of concept map. So if um, uh, can you just draw that one and then we can Yeah, right. Uh, so say say if you say if you're given words like um, yes, chemistry, you know, physics, biology, right? Why are you talking about other sciences? Just do do a concept map. This is just a general example. So you draw you draw the words oh, and and link them. Chemistry, biology. I should have done them like this. Yeah, it's like okay, and you'd have to link that to that and say why. Okay. So physics, you know, physics talks about um, atoms. I don't know. Chemistry talks about molecules. You know, so does biology. Physics. And Yes, so these are the terms that you'll need to be able to have to link together. Physics and biology, I can't really think of a connection. Electricity? Nerve impulses? Yeah. Yes. We're trying to do an extreme cast and you'll get the notes at least anyway. Ah, yeah, yeah, good idea. P drive, put on the P drive. And it won't. We'll flood the, we'll flood the internet with it. Christina. Yes, yes, so what I'm telling you, what I'm telling everyone, you can do this.
you can do this uh, tonight and have it ready, have a version ready, and just have to sort of generate it, re regenerate it on the day. And this is, these are the terms you're going to be given. No, no, they don't all have to be linked, but obviously, the more connections, the better the marks. So if you just write all the terms and they're on the page, no links, no marks. The more links you can draw, the more marks you'll get. All right, uh, is that everything? That's everything I wanted to say. The bell is about to go. I think we've run out of time. One more question. Just a sec. Michelle and then uh, Kathleen. Oh, this is for every class. You can bring notes, but you know, just what some, some loose leaf sheets. You can't bring in a textbook, you can't bring in your folders. But you, yes, you have to bring in that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You should you should fill out the boxes. You should bring it in through there. Yes. I'm gonna stop recording now unless there's anything else.